going to record. All right. So um, we're going to be using the Rick and Morty API today. Um, you can go to the, uh, the Rick and Morty API.com webpage uh, and click on the docs button at the top. And if you go here, you will notice that they have all kinds of different things. The only two things that we're gonna be messing with is the documentation for getting a single character, which is here. Uh, and if you, if you just uh, select this, if I can select it, um, and go to, you have now done a, basically an Axios Git, and it got the, JSON information for this single character. Um, and then if you go to multiple characters, you can go to this and you can go and get um, you know more than one character here. Uh, so they're giving us character one and 183, right? So Johnny Depp is still alive. Um, you know, if you want to do 42 after that, you could do that. Um, you can also do, say, get all characters. Or if you notice, uh, you're going to this character field. And this will give you, uh, starting at page one, um, all of the characters that are, that are in here. They've also got... Um, you know, images and things like that. So like, if you want to see what uh, Rick looks like, that's, that's him. So we're going to try to integrate as much of this information as we can into here. And this is going to get into um, a lot of, um, a lot of uh, arrays and object speak. So um, right here, the easiest way for me to tell if something is an array or an object is I look at the, the bracket. If it is a curly bracket, then that means it's an object. If it is a square bracket, that means it's an array. If it has a square bracket next to it, that means that you can loop over it. Uh, if it doesn't, then it'll give you an error saying, hey, I can't for each over this. It's not a function or you know, it'll, it'll explode pretty wildly and uh, nobody wants that. So a lot of it is paying attention to what data you are getting back from Axios and how you're going to, um, how you're going to access it. So a lot of the times, uh, if you see an array, you're gonna wanna loop. If it's an object, you're gonna wanna do whatever the name of the variable is that you, you have for the object, dot, whatever key. Uh, any questions so far? Sounds like a no. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a Google search for NPM and uh, Axios. And you can use DuckDuckGo if you want. So this is going to take us to the npmjs.com and the Axios website. So what this is, is this is the pretty much official version of Axios that's out right now. And in this specific case, uh, next week we'll teach you how to, to add it into uh, our, our uh, React using NPM. So we would use that. But because I'm not, uh, we're going to add in... <coughs> this at the top of our HTML file. So we wanna have this in our head and we're gonna put this script file in here. So if I save this and go back and check, uh, it doesn't do anything special. We, we just added a, a dependency. I can go over here to our console, notice that it doesn't, doesn't have any errors or anything. Now, if I try to go in here and I do a console, log, not console assert, and just do a hello world. And I refresh this, it's not going to do anything because we haven't linked our HTML file to our JavaScript file. Um, 
in order to do so, we need to have a script tag. And so this script tag, we want to point to the current directory and index.js. And I think I actually just want to have it where it's just index.js now that I'm thinking about it. Um, and this will run. There's some problems with the script to the way that I have it right now. You'll notice we do have this uh, hello world. So it is actually running this script, but it's running it right here before this body has had time to process. Um, so a lot of the times, if you watch like YouTube tutorials, they'll have you know this down at the you know, end of body or whatever. Um, and that's called deferring your script. So what we can do is we can defer just by putting this here. And what this will do is it will wait until the end of this, this file. So once when it's done processing this file, it will then run this script. Does that make sense? So we should have it below like the, the meta and everything, but inside the head? Yeah, anywhere inside of the head. You could technically put it all the way at the top if you'd like, but I just okay. put it in here because it looks better. And, um, you know, anywhere in the head's fine um, because it's being deferred. I think you could even get away with putting it above here uh, on your Axios. So if you had it above your Axios, it would technically work because the Axios isn't being deferred. So but you want to try to have your scripts in order and which way you want them to run. So any dependencies go above uh, your scripts and that's, that's about it. Not, not much else to it. So <clears throat> let me do a, um, we're going to specifically look for this class container here. So um, we're going to make a we'll make a constant container, and we're going to equal this to a query selector. And we're going to just pass in a class of container. So class is dot right. If it was an ID, you would use a, a pound sign. And so now we have this dot container. So that's our selector. So if you see on you know, a quiz or whatever, anytime you hear about a selector, you'll hear it like a CSS selector. Um, you're basically using CSS to figure out which one of these objects you are, right? which one of these objects you are selecting. Query selector is only going to select the first one. Query selector all grabs everything. Uh, for the most part, I'm only really concerned about query selector in this one. Um, query selector all is useful if you have an existing website, but we're going to be building one from scratch. So that's pretty much it. So if I console log my container, um, it should console log the section class container thing, right? Um, so if I save this, you'll notice that we have section class container and it's been, it's been selected. So that's a good way to make sure that you've got where you're expecting it to be. And it'll actually show it over, over here um, on, uh, on the left of my screen, that it's uh, zero height and 1,060 pixels wide. Let me make this a little bit bigger. Hopefully that's clear. Sometimes these zooms don't come through very clear. I don't even think I need that open. So um, now we've got, um, our head, we've got our script linked. Uh, I haven't put it in a, any CSS or anything. We can deal with that later. That's, that's extra credit. Um, and make this um, into basically an application at this point. 
so what I might be interested in doing is instead of console logging a container, what I might be interested in doing is doing an Axios. And I'm going to be doing, we're just going to do a, a single character right quick. We'll do Morty right here. Actually, let's let's do uh, let's do snowball. So, if I wanted to check this out, they've they've got documentation in here, where you can do question mark name equals snowball, and it looks like it's uh, three hundred and twenty nine is the one that we want. So let's let's do three hundred twenty nine. So the information that we're looking for here should be coming through right here. So it should be Snuffles, Snowball. Uh, if we look at the image, it should look like this nice little dog with a cool looking hat um, and have this information in it. So um, when I do this, um, I'm going to want to know when it when it succeeds, which is the dot then, and when it fails, which is a dot catch. So if this succeeds, we're going to need a callback. And the callback is going to be passed in information. And most of the time you'll see it as res, results, uh, you know, all kinds of things. So if I just, if I can, I, geez, if I can console log, um, give me one second here. Sorry, my speaker was dinging. Uh, if I can console log res, so we're going to be getting just what is being passed back from Axios into here. And we're also going to do a little So what I've done is I've made an Axios get request to Rick and Morty API slash API character or API slash character slash 329, which should give us this information back. Um, if you'll notice this uh, dot then, this is if this succeeds, the catch is if it fails. Um, so let's, let's show you the then and catch in action. So if I go back here, you can see that this is giving me back uh, some information, way too much information. Uh, the information that we want is res.data, right? So that's the created episode, image, all that stuff, right? So what if I, I went to uh, put in a bunch of J's in here and, um, well, now we're getting this, this error here because we console logged error right here. So that is Axios saying, hey, something was wrong with what you put in here. So it will error out um, if you have something incorrect in here Rick, or if the server is not available or things like that. Real quick, are you using live server? Or yeah, are this, you, yeah, this is just live server. This is just live server. Just like the console that you're going back and forth between. Yeah, so this is just live server. So like you can see, I'm running on port uh, 5,500. Um, the sprint won't be in live server. It'll be just like all the other ones where you do the NPM run start, but uh, I got a later start on this than I wanted to and didn't have time to configure a, uh, a parcel server or a Webpack server. So, um, but yeah, this is, this is just live. Uh, live server, and I'm doing it like um, like you might have, say, 15 years ago for developing JavaScript. 
by doing this type of a type of a thing. It's still useful, but you're going to find React is so much so much easier, so much nicer than doing it this way. So I fixed the Axios Git, and we're now getting back uh, our result. You can see all kinds of neat stuff that it sends back, and you know the headers and stuff like that. It's not anything that I'm personally interested in, but I'm sure somebody would say, oh man, there's your XML HTT request on ready state change null. I, I'm not really personally that happy about that. So um, I'm more interested in this data here. So if we're in res and I want to go into data, since res is an object, we use dot notation. So res dot data. So if I save this, now you can see now we have a new object here. So res dot data is an object because it's got this curly bracket here. Now, if we wanted to loop over episodes or something, you, you notice that that is a, an array of eight items because it has this square bracket. So anytime that you're looking at a log, you can tell what everything is based off of whether it has a curly bracket or a square bracket. So when I do res.data, that gives me the information from here. But what if I want to do, um, say, res.data.image? So all I would need to do is just do res.data.image save it, you'll notice that we were able to find this link of the cute dog Snowball, or Snuffles, depending on which part of the episode you, you were watching. <clears throat> so that's, that's the way that we can directly access this information, is by looking at uh, our res.data. So what if, what if we wanted to make a component that displays that information? Um, so what we could do is we can make a new function and we can do, um, say, um, card maker, right? And we can pass in some sort of object from Axios, because I can call it anything that I want. And I can console log come on, some sort of object from Axios. Right? And we're going to change this because that's just annoyingly long. But anything that's inside of, whenever you see like an arrow function or whatever like this, anything that's inside of your parameters is your name. So like um, next week, people freak out about props. Props is a banana word. You could call it banana. It doesn't have to be called props. And all it is is an object. So if you understand objects, you can understand props pretty fast. Um, there's a few little connect the dot things that you'll have to do with practice, but it, it gets easier with time. Um, so if I pass in to card maker, if I invoke card maker and I pass in res.data, because we've, we've proven this is the information that we want, right? Then I should be able to, to console log out some sort of object uh, from Axios. Um, because that's res.data. So res.data becomes some sort of object from Axios, right? So if I save this, you'll notice now we have a second console log. Uh, I can get rid of this other console log because we're doing that exact same thing up here. So I save that. And now we just have one, and it's the exact same information as what we had coming out of res.data because we passed it into some sort of object from Axios and then just console logged it out. So this will give us a good idea of um, you know, which, which character we're, we're looking at and that kind of thing. Uh, any other questions yet?
going to start getting harder from here. Uh, so my question is, is so like we're supposed to be connecting or like we're supposed to be kind of mimicking what you're doing right on the screen? No, if you'd like, or you can kick back and relax and just uh, ask questions. It doesn't matter to me. Okay. Well, I just want to make sure that I understand because like, so, so I'm, I'm like semi following along with you. Mm -hmm. I created the index.js file and I cre also created the index.html file. Sure. Um, and I, and I just want to make sure that like, I mean, you know, connecting the two files appropriately in case that's part of the sprint. Like I just want to make sure that, you know, if we have to start from scratch. Yeah. I don't think you really have to start from scratch. Okay. For just, value. The only reason one is because I, I did the, you know, constant, you know, the, the container, right. Mm -hmm. yep. But it did not add a container to my HTML file. So I just wanted to. Yeah. So like here I've, I've added a container to my uh, HTML file. It could be a div. It could be a section. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> Yeah, so I guess I was just trying to figure out why it didn't add it. No, oh, well, I'm not adding a, a container to here. I'm adding it. Oh, you actually put it in the HTML file yourself? Yeah. Okay, gotcha. That, that, that's where I was just wanting to make sure. Yeah, yeah, I had to put that in there because I didn't feel like adding a, a section class container through index.js. I wanted to be in something other than body and huh. have this where this is like my where my app starts. Perfect. I understand now. Thank you. That's all. I just wanted to make sure I knew what I was, it was reading. Thank you. Yeah, not a problem. So now that we have the character, what we can do is we can start, you know, generating some uh, some variables and start injecting them into our uh, start generating these into our uh, our DOM. So if if I just do a, um, we'll just call this a, a card, and we'll do a document dot um, create element, and we'll just call this an article. That's fine. And if I return the card, and we'll just put some space here. So now we're returning to nowhere. So we've invoked this, something is returning, and it's returning to a bunch of spaces. So what you might do here is have your Your container, right? So this uh, const container document query selector container here, and we're going to do container uh, dot append child, and whatever gets returned from this card maker is now passed into append child on container. So if I, if I save this and I go back over to elements and I look into body, you can see the section here. And inside of that section, we have an article. So we have returned one article into our section, class container. <clears throat> so if I wanted to, um, do uh let's see here yeah i guess we could do uh a set attribute and I always forget the set attribute let's look that up So you'll notice that they have these name value pairs or key value pairs. So probably what we want to do is set this to say a class and yeah, I could probably use class name add or something like that. And we'll just call this, um, I don't know, 
let's do something kind of interesting. So I'm going to use backtick so I can use um, some more some more information on here. So like um, we'll call this. character dash, I can escape out of that and put in some sort of object from axios.id in here. And it'll show that we're getting whatever the information that we got out of axios has a dot ID on it. Um, and we're going to be basically making a class with character dash whatever number this is. Um, so if we go back over here to the console, you can see that the ID is 329. So this is going to be making a class of character-329. Pretty sure at least. I have been made a fool of before. OK, cool. So now we have a cl class of character-329. That's kind of nice. Um, and this will get kind of a little bit more interesting uh, once when we get it where we're looping and putting things into here. Um, and so I'm only having to write this once to do as many of these cards as I want. Um, I can also clear out uh, the container and repaint it if I wanted to. Uh, there's all kinds of things that you can do with this. Um, but for right now, um, oh, let's forget if it's, uh, yeah, I don't remember which one it is, but let's see. Okay, so we're just going to call this, uh, I don't know, my object, right? So much nicer than typing that huge, long, crazy thing that I put in there. Um, so we're console logging my object because it gives us this wonderful, uh, this wonderful usable thing that we could just open and take a look at. So uh, there is uh, a name, so snuffles snowball. That's that's great. So let's let's make a uh, an image tag. So we'll we'll just call this one our um, we'll call that a card container. We'll call this our image tag. Um, and not attribute. There we go. And we'll just do like a, an image, right? So this we will want to attach to card. So what we could do is just card.append child. And we will append child of pick. So if I save this. I go into here, you can see that we have this image tag. It's not displaying anything, but that has now added our image to our card container. Um, same thing if, if you want to do like, uh, say, a header, for an example. Um, we'll say, uh, we'll say, our card header, because we can call these whatever we want, um, and document dot create element, and we'll do um, this will be an H two. So we've got an H two. We haven't attached it yet, and we probably want to make this so that it goes above. The image tag. And we'll do an append child 
of the H2. Oops, sorry, it was a card header. So now you can see we have a, an H2 and an image. Not much to them. There's no title or anything. Um, so not, not super exciting. Um, if we want to start to append some information in here, we can go back to what we console logged and we can do my object dot name would be a good one for a header. So we can do a text content on, on this. So we're going to change the text content attribute and we're going to change that to um, card.name and save that. Oh, not card.name, geez, I've lost my mind. Excuse me, my object.name. Save it. Okay, so now you can see we've got an H2 of Snuffles Snowball. And if we go into our element and we go and drill down, we basically now have an article with Snuffles Snowball. No, nope, I'm putting it in the wrong place. Um, yeah, I put that in card. I want to do this in card header. There we go. So I had accidentally put that into my article as snuffles and the H2 didn't go anywhere. Now we should have an H2 of snuffles. So that was my fault. I, I messed that up. Uh, anybody have any questions yet? Best time to ask. I know this is a little different format than was, was taught to you, but it doesn't really matter what order these go in, um, so long as they've been defined before you start uh, putting in attributes and things like that. Um, I'm doing it here because I'm just, in, I'm just adding them in one by one. Um, so if I were to do card.src, I could put in my, uh, sorry, this will be pick. I'm making that mistake again. Pick.source, and we can set this to my object dot um, image, I believe. We'll open this up again. Yep, so we've got an image and we could do an alt tag of myobject.name. So now we've got Snuffles Snowball and his photo out here. And so now we've got some very basic information on here. Um, if we wanted to add like one more thing, we could probably put in uh, a paragraph tag and we'll do card P. Uh, uh, create element. And we're just going to just have a, a, a paragraph tag, right? <laughs> um, and we can do a pin child, um, our card P. Now, if I save this, you know, I've blown it up. What did I do? Now, card capital P. Here we go. So if I look at my elements, I have an article, it's got an H2, it's got an image, and it's got a P tag. So that's, that's pretty cool, I guess. Um, but we probably want something in our, our paragraph. And we can use that wonderful back tick thing and put in some, some neat information like, um, We'll do my object dot name is a
my object that vendor. And we can put another one right next to it and do my object dot species who is I have these memorized by the way, so so we're going to have uh, Snuffles is a uh, male dog who is alive. I, th I think he's still alive. I haven't watched the latest season. So we have, uh, oh, he's a male animal who is alive. So something else has exploded here. If you notice, I put the card text content. I did that again. Card P. Save it. Now we've got a card with snuffles and this uh, male animal who is alive. So this is just one card. This is where we're going to get into the more interesting part of looping. So if, if I just go to, um, say character delete snowball to this one here. If you'll notice, we've got a an array, or sorry, not an array, an object. Inside of that object, you've got info and results. That doesn't look anything like what the previous object did, because right now the previous object looks like this. So you've got an ID and all this other stuff. So let's go ahead and break it right quick. And we're gonna just kind of put this character in. So we're gonna copy and go back to our Axios. And we're gonna get rid of the individual character. And I'm gonna put in this Axios get, and I'm just gonna save it. So if we go back over here, it says undefined with a blank picture. Undefined is an undefined undefined who is undefined. That's not very helpful. But you remember, we went to res.data originally to get the individual card. So if we wanted to, say, have our first array result, what we could do is we could try to pass in res.data result. So this is results here, plural. And that's passing in an array. We don't want an array to be passed into this. We'd have to loop over it. So for right now, I'm just going to do results. And we're going to go to the first one, just to make sure this is getting data that we want. So Rick Sanchez is a male human who is alive. So I, I think that's working. So the idea here is that um, I want to make it so that it's doing multiple container append childs. So what I might do is uh, I'm just going to uh, comment that out for a second. And I'm interested in looping over res.data.results. So right. So what I can do is I can do a for each. And this for each is going to give us a individual, I guess we shouldn't call it character. We'll call this an individual, right? So it will give us one chunk of information back. If I console log individual, You'll notice that we've got where it looped once, looped twice, looped three times. And each one of these looks very familiar. They've got the ID, gender, name, species, status, all of the information that we need to make this other thing work. So what we might be able to do is move this up. 
And instead of passing in res data results zero, we should be able to pass in individual. I'm just gonna get rid of this because I know that. Yep. Uh, it's going to be console logged in card maker. So now if I save this, you'll notice that we have a bunch of characters with just running a 4-H on the exact same information that we were getting before. So res.data.results in this case. Uh, not every API follows this format. So it could be res.data.data. I've seen that happen. Uh, res.data.results. Uh, res.data.array. You've got to look at res.data in a console log and figure out what, what the data is. Or just go to uh, go to your you know, API call and search for it. So like if you ran, you know, 330 uh, solicitor Rick. So I guess a British, British lawyer. Um, and it'll give you sort of the information that you're trying to get. Um, if yours doesn't look like this and you try going to there, it's just like a wall of text. Uh, I have this, um, oh, what do you call it? Uh, I have an extension called JSON view. Uh, J-S-O-N-V-U-E, and it works out pretty well. Um, basically, it shows me the information without it looking like a big wall of text. So this is the easiest way of getting information from one of those links. So that's pretty much the sprint with, with air quotes except they've got some other weird things in there. Um, so probably what I'm going to do next is show you guys something called objects.keys. So let's say that, um, let's say for whatever reason I have a uh, yeah, we'll just call this uh, character objects and it's equal to an object, right? And what if I said uh, human and we come in here and we look at the uh, say character one. So this is this is definitely a human, right? So we'll just copy this. I'm probably going to get rid of some of this information, but um, so we don't need the URL or created. Uh, let's see what else we don't need in here. We want the image don't care about the URL. And yeah. You know, location. Or a URL, I don't care. Um, no origin, no type. Okay, so that should be all of the information that we had, right? So we've just got a human in here. Um, we'll do uh, we'll do snowball. Oh, that's most correct. So we'll get. There we go. I think that's enough. Copy that. We'll we'll now do um, an animal. Need a comma. So now we have a second key value pair in this op in this object. So if I paste this in and make it so it's not so ugly, why did you do that? All right, so we've got uh, an ID, 
we've got our name, status, species, type as a dog, um, male, don't care about its origin, don't care about its location and, gen, right, and, and, and image. So we have an animal and we have a human. So if if I go in here and I'm just going to okay reversing that slash there no It is a star slide. Sorry. One of these days I'll remember that. So I just kind of got rid of everything. And I'm just going to give you an example of getting your object keys here. So what if you had more than one human and more than one animal? Let's find. Let's find a, another human. So we'll, we'll put in Morty, might as well. And so we'll do ID2, image, copy. And please stop me if I'm losing anybody. This is the perfect time for you to learn this as well, which is nested arrays with other objects in them. Let me just make this a little prettier. There we go. So we have a human, which is an array. And it's got uh, Rick Sanchez and Morty. Uh, don't need a location. OK. So Morty Smith is a alive human. Don't need a type. Uh, male. Okay, so that's good. And snuffles. I guess we didn't have a type in here. We can get rid of the type. And let me find uh, another animal right quick. Put him here. There we go. So Bill, I'm almost afraid to put that in there. We want the image, copy that. And we're gonna put this right after uh, Snowball, which by the way, is one of my favorites. this up a little bit. Uh, Bill, status, type, I don't care about the dog. Uh, Mail, origin, location. There we go. So now, if I save this, we have a human key and an animal key. So like, let's say that you have um, like a list of, of uh, of these characters and you wanted to separate them out by human and animal. And you could have that pretty easily through this. So what you could do is you could just uh, console log out character objects first. So and I think I'm gonna make it a low case C. One second. All right. So now this is going to console log out the character object. So if we go over here and we take a look, you can see that we have an animal array of two and a human array of two. So 
if we wanted to access uh, the animals and the humans, we could do that like that, right? So we now know that these are our humans or those are our animals and these are our humans. There's another way to do this that will make it so that you can um, access it a little bit more easily. So if we do something called object.keys, So with object.keys, there's also another one, object.values, which will give you the other side of the coin. So object.keys is going to give you the key names of everything that's in here. So we could do console log our character objects. If we go here, you'll notice that we have an array of human and animal. So because we have that, we can for each of them. We can console log species here, right? You'll notice we've got the first console log, which is this object keys here. And that gives us an array of human and animal. And when we for each them, it gives us those elements called species. And we individually console log them out. So that's two separate lines, human and animal. So what if we were to console log character objects, and you remember square bracket notation as being the nightmare that it is. What if we do character objects species? So now you can actually see what's inside of those human and animal, and you don't even have to know what these keys are in here. Let's see if we can find another one that we can. Uh, I think they have a. Uh, so find one. So species alien. So we'll do the cluster princess. All right, so copy. We'll do an alien here. Up a little bit. Right. Okay. <clears throat> so now when I'm looking at this. And refresh this, it already says that we've got three items. So human, animal, and alien. So underneath human, we've got two items. I mean, underneath animal, we've got two items. And underneath alien, we've got one item. 
So what this allows you to do is to say, loop over your species. So what you could do is you could do character objects dot, or so, yeah, sorry, species. We can do another loop inside of here. And we'll call this, um, oh, we'll, we'll call this an individual again. Right. So let me, I'm going to move this down a little bit to the bottom. And I'm going to put this in, I'm going to uncomment the card maker. So we'll have this card maker here, the same thing that we used before, we're using the same format. But inside of here, uh, let's see here. One moment, I need to undo this as well. All right, so we've got this uh, container here. We need to append child to our container. So we'll do We'll do card maker, invoke it, and pass in our individual here. Now, if I if I save this, you'll notice that we have humans, two animals, and an alien. Now I know I've lost everybody. Any questions, comments, concerns? Okay, well, uh, if that's it, then I think um, there's no questions, then I'm gonna stop recording.